Fear not, Grappler players, because after Honda and maybe Dan, T-Hawk is probably the single most buffed character from AE2012 to Omega mode. Honestly, this character makes Ultra T-Hawk look like a joke. Hawk's normal saw a few changes here and there. The main thing that makes them better is while he already had pretty good frame advantage, he can now actually complete his combos due to better forward movement on his special moves. Close Roundhouse now launches like Zangief. It's a free juggle state, but you still can't juggle to Ultra 2. Close Strong, Close Forward, and Close Fierce now have juggle potential. All are good after most EX Spire or Corner Close Roundhouse combos. Strong does the most damage while Fierce inflicts a soft knockdown. Crouch Roundhouse now only knocks down on the second hit. There's still no way to make it safe, and it still only does 50 damage if you get the second hit only, but it makes it much safer since the opponent can now quick stand. Low Strong now cancels, and does a bit more damage than any of T-Hawk's other cancelable normals. It's quite good in combos. On the flip side, T-Hawk's low forward doesn't cancel since that was an ultra change. Close forward is now two hits. The first hit cancels and does 80 damage, and you can link out of it quite reliably from close strong. Interestingly, the first hit maintains a juggle state. This is useful in his corner conversions and his focus backdash combos. You have a new normal, Hunting Hawk, towards Fierce. It's a real overhead, and it's actually really good at going over lows, but it's reactable and there are no combos from it. Now, specials. All versions of T-Hawk's SPD do significantly more damage, but now the opponent can quick stand the knockdown, Hawk gets worse Oki. You still have some after the light version. More importantly, all versions now have 4 frames of startup, formerly 2. T-Hawk loses a ton of punishing power from this, and his tick throws are worse. This would be horrible if Hawk didn't get so much in return. The EX version is also 4 frames. Like Zangief, it costs 2 bars, it does 350 damage and 300 stun. Unlike Zangief, you can't combo into it at all. It does have a bit more range than his light SPD. Rather than invincibility, it has armor, which sounds like a downgrade. But since it gets the armor on frame 1, you can do an armor cancel ultra with it. Medium and heavy uppercut now have true invincibility. Medium is a bit faster than Heavy, and does a bit more damage as an anti-air, 180 versus 170. Unlike the other two versions, Medium is 2 hits. This means it'll work in some of T-Hawk's struggles. Light Uppercut is important too. It has the most lateral reach of his uppercut, so it's the most consistent in combos. Compare all three. Just like Ultra, T-Hawk can cancel an EX Uppercut to an EX Dive if he spends another meter. And surprisingly, just like Ultra, it works on block. This means T-Hawk can spend 2 bars to do an Invincible Reversal and still be pretty safe, which is extremely irregular in Omega. EX Uppercut to EX Dive is generally T-Hawk's ideal 2 bar route for damage, and he can break 400 with it. The corner carry is insane, as usual. Condor Spire has been buffed so much it's unreal, and it absolutely qualifies as T-Hawk's gun. It makes Ultra Spire look like trash. The input is now an extremely manageable quarter circle forward kick. All meterless versions now have a startup hit, which makes them dramatically faster. The light one is now 3 frame startup, the medium one is 4, the heavy one is 6, and the EX one is 9. They also have dramatically more forward movement. Even the heavy one is fast enough to combo from light normals, and it does the most damage. 
I can't overstate how fast they are. You can literally just link into them. That was the heavy version. Since they all have different ranges and speeds, certain versions tend to drop out in certain combos. Here's a string where the light and heavy ones work, but the medium one doesn't, for example. Light is the most consistent by far, but it's the weakest. Just about every combo Tiok has can end in Spire. It has decent damage and fantastic forward movement, as well as juggle potential. And did I mention it actually has great Oki? EX Spire now always sets up a juggle to close normals or EX uppercut. If you get a deep connect, you can juggle to a medium uppercut. You can also juggle a meterless Spire for the corner carry. Or even a second EX Spire. Even if the first hit whiffs and cancels, Light Spire will still combo properly and knock down. This is what I meant when I said T-Hawk's main buff was his ability to complete combos due to the range of his specials. Just like Ultra, Spires are pretty safe if they hit at the tip. As icing on the cake, if a Spire is 2 hits, you can FADC the first hit and combo a level 2 focus. This gives T-Hawk a 2 bar combo into either Ultra, and it's not even that precise. The window feels like 2 or 3 frames, whereas most level 2 focus combos are 1 frame. T-Hawk's main new special is Fantastic 2. Quarter Circle Back Punch gives you Earth Rage. I can feel the power Literally a Seismo. There are no differences between versions other than where the Seismo hits. T-Hawk's poor movement and lack of Oki's MF from his throws don't even matter. He doesn't mind being reset to neutral now because of how good this move is. He can now easily hang with Fireball characters at mid-range. It's already pretty safe, but if it connects you can FADC it. This can help you pick up some long-range punishes, too. You can also cancel into the light version from Close Strong. The ground pound creates a free juggle state, so t can get whatever ender he wants. EX Earth Rage is plus, and throws the opponent extremely far away from t -Hawk. Generally speaking, he has no good conversion from it. And it won't work properly against cornered opponents, but it's fast enough to combo from close forward or low strong. T-Hawk's last grounded special is also new. If you hit three kicks, T-Hawk will get a sort of command jump, evidently called Condor Rise. The jump isn't very useful. It has a hitbox right above his head, but it's not invincible. After jumping, you can do a Condor Dive or any of your neutral jump normals. What's interesting is the jump itself. You can cancel the pre-jump frames into any Special, Super, Ultra, or Focus. Anything T-Hawk has that cancels, you can cancel into Focus for free, though it's too slow to give him any new combos. You can use it to do easy standing 720s too. Finally, we have Condor Dive, another move that saw a slew of buffs. Though you do it with three punches when doing it from EX Uppercut, the regular input is now Quarter Circle Forward Punch. And since it now has a regular input, you'll be pleased to find it now has three different versions. The heavy version is particularly interesting because T-Hawk can act out of it. No one I've played has blocked this their first time seeing it. Condor Dives are dramatically safer on block. They no longer bounce off the opponent, and even at a terrible angle, they're only barely minus. While if you get deeper connects, they can even be plus. The opponent now has to try and anti-air them to punish them. All Condor Dives knock down, but since T-Hawk recovers once he hits the ground, you can now juggle out of them. EX Dive is mostly the same as the medium one, but it has an easier time getting cross-up dives and it does a bit more damage. 
I feel like I should mention now that no hawk dive breaks armor anymore, not even EX. If you're jumping away, you can't do meterless dives, only EX. EX dive has no height restriction, so you could theoretically use it to blow up standing crouch techs. And T Hawk still has his instant overhead with it. Unfortunately, T Hawk Super saw zero changes apart from a boost in damage, so he's a rare example of an Omega character who can't easily break 600. You can't cancel or combo into it in any way except from Focus Crumple, and there are no juggles into it. Though T Hawk has a pretty easy time using a lot of meter in a single combo. Hawk's Ultra saw no changes, apart from the motion of Ultra 2 being double half circle back punches like pre Ultra SF4. Because he can now actually confirm both of them, they're indirectly much better, since they're just as good in neutral. I honestly get the feeling that the original SF4 dev team didn't truly care about T-Hawk being viable, as long as he wasn't ruining the game by being too good. He's consistently one of the most mediocre characters since his debut, and what's worse, his skill ceiling is frustratingly low compared to most of the cast. It feels like Omega T-Hawk, who was designed by the SF5 team, was made to truly be competitive with the rest of the roster. His grappler knobs were turned down, and in return he got a ton of unique tools built around his long-range pokes, short-range plus-frame normals, and linear movement-oriented specials. The result is a slow, close-range brawler, where your command grab is just there to remind the opponent that they can't block forever. You can feel this design in several characters in SF5, most notably Nikali, but also Birdie and Abigail to some degree. <laughs> 